listen. Cake. Mm. Cake is good. But so is organic chemistry. I'm fueled up. I'm ready to go. Let's name some organic compounds. Mm. So here's what you need to know. This video is about naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Those are three different types of organic compounds. Organic compounds are compounds that are made of carbon, like these two. These are the exact same structures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight grand total carbons here. This little squiggly, bumpily line, we count the points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight carbons. They're the exact same thing. Now, there is an art form here of labeling these things, or rather naming them from the structure, and taking the name and then drawing the structure. And so, again, if you're looking for advanced organic chemistry because there's ketones and esters, oh, don't get me started about esters. There's alcohols. I'm only going to do these first three to get you the basics of naming organic compounds. So alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. All of these endings tell us something about it. The names of these organic compounds is basically a roadmap, a, a, a location of where all the action is on the carbons. So let's rock and roll. Alkanes. Alkanes means there's, they're made of single bonds, like these little guys right here. Alkenes, double bonds. And we depict them like that, little double bond things, little equal signs. Alkynes means that in the organic compound, you guessed it, a triple bond. So let's start. There are four steps, and they're complicated because there's a lot to keep in mind. But I love organic chemistry because it actually makes sense after you practice it. So here's what we got. We're going to use this example. It's going to be chunky. So part one, or rather step one. Step one is count or find the parent chain. The parent chain is the longest consecutive connected number of carbons in the compound. So if we look at this compound over here, right, you'll see I counted out one, two, three, four, five. But that's not the only combination. What about this one? Here's five carbons, one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have to be in a straight line. It can be something like that. Well, what about this one? Here's another one, two, three, four, five carbons. And we can keep going. There's one, there's three carbons, there's five, there's, anyways, it's all over the place. But we want to make it very simple and easy for us. So get rid of those carbons, we'll just look at this. So that's step one. The other thing that you need to understand is you need to name the parent chain based on how many carbons that it has and the location of the multiple bonds. So for right now, you can see that we have five carbons, and the prefix for five carbons is pent, like a pentagon, right? Right? Five sides, or five carbons. And we need to be able to label this. Now, looking at the bonds, you can see that there are only single bonds here, right? There's only single bonds. So what we do is, oh, look at me, I'm in the way. And so what that means is that we are, um, we have a, a, a compound here. Uh, what, what are we doing again? Oh yeah, organic compound that is only single bonds here. And see, anes. So we would use ane because this is only made of single bonds. So what I want to show you here is a little bit of a, well, it's a bit funky. We'll, we'll check this out. Okay, we have pent, I am in the way again. Here, how about I go over here? That sounds good. We got pent, and then we have um, ane. So the name of this parent chain is pent, ane. Pent meaning five carbons, ane meaning only made out of single bonds. Isn't that delicious? I'm gonna make myself puke. So, Here's what we need. We need a list of these prefixes, okay? So we have, or yes, the prefixes that mean certain, certain things here, okay? 
And so what I want to show you is this guy. So here we have a list of prefixes. If there's one carbon, that's meth. So here's an example of something that has one carbon. We would call that meth. Uh, two carbons. If it has two carbons, then we'd use um, F. And here's something that's two carbons, two C2H6. Or, H6. or we can write it like this. It's the same thing. If it has three carbons, we use the prefix prop, right? And there's three carbons. And same thing, and we keep going, there's bute, right? Um, and we would label these things methane, if it was only made of single bonds. Ethane, if it was only made of single bonds, and so on and so forth. Propane, butane. We have here five, pentane. That's what we started with. That was our compound in the example. Over here in purple, you will remember these. These are just for the, the numbers of things. So if there is one methane, then we use monomethane. Well, I never use one for mono, but two, dimethane, trimethane. But this, these prefixes talk about the numbers of something. These prefixes talk about specifically the number of carbons. And we can use these prefixes for branches, that's coming next, and parents. So let's get on to the next slide. What we have is, let's get back to our example, shall we? Come on, go to the next slide. I need to get my face down there too. Don't want to be too hoggish when it comes to this stuff. Okay, so um, here's our example, right, coming back at you. And we have the parent chain, which is five, and we have uh, remember that we labeled it pentane. So let's go to step two. Step two is, you know, pretty decent. We have to number the parent chain carbons. And we have to start with the carbon that is closest to the branches or the multiple bonds. Okay, so where are the branches? Well, I don't know. Well, these little branches, as you can see, it's highlighted in red. This is my parent chain. So all these other little things, those would be the branches. So here is the first carbon because it's closest to the branches. So this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five. That's it. We need these because these are going to become our locations. Um, now, it happens up here as well on this little uh, line structure. Here's the first carbon, second, third, fourth, and fifth. All right, and, and we love it. So it's very important that we get our locations down. And we don't normally write this down, but I'm showing you what I would be doing in my head. So you need to identify any of the branches that are up on here. And what are these branches? Again, these are the things that they're offshoots of the parent chain. And we need to locate them. So here are my three branches. I have a one carbon branch and another one carbon branch, both on carbon two. And here's another one carbon branch on carbon four. So um, on this line structure, you have them right here. So here's two little one carbon branches coming off of the main, the main, think of it as a tree, as a trunk of the tree. Now, here's where it gets funky, guys. Ugh, this is ugly. This is ugly. So here's my example, and I've copied it to the next page. Let's keep going. Step three. Now, this is complicated, so I'm just going to zoom past all of these. We need to name the branches. Because remember, if we're going to make a map, all we've named is the parent chain and the type of bonds that's our, that, that, that are found in the parent chain. So we need to name the branches. We need the same prefixes for the number of carbon for each branch. We need to end the branch names in YL. So it's going to sound like ooh, ooh every time. We need to use prefixes for the number of, of uh, similar branches. Um, Remember the numbers, the purple ones? So we have three of these one chains, so we're going to use try. That's, that's like, a, like a, what is that? Spoiler. Spoiler. So if there are different branches, label them alphabetically. You have to. If, here's another if, if there are more than one of the same type of branch, then you must label each number location in, in the name. Now that was a lot. There's a lot of rules here and we don't have all of these in our one little example. 
So we have to be careful, okay? So watch and learn. We have for each and every carbon or each and every branch, we have to use a prefix, right? So the prefix for one carbon, as you remember, was meth. So meth equals one carbon. So we're gonna label this one thing here, this one carbon branch, meth. Oh, you might wanna pause the video and say that right now, methyl, right? There's a methyl, there's a methyl, there's another methyl over here. Here's another methyl right here. These are all methyls because there's one carbon and it's a branch. The ul means it's a branch. And we would use the word try, right? Because it is on the second and fourth, we would use try to label or to identify the fact that there's three of them. So carrying on, oh, oh, how ugly this is. Oh, oh, get rid of some of this stuff. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, here I have my example. Here's my three methyls. Remember that's three is try. Now we're going to step four, put the name together. Okay, so it's crazy. Now here I'm going to write something down. This is kind of a template, okay, of how you write this. It's a mixture of dashes and commas and different of everything. So here is the grand total everything that you need, okay? Let me get rid of that. So what we need to first write down is the number locations of the branches. The number locations is two and four, but remember we need to write down each location. There's three of them, so there should be three number locations. Then we write a dash, and then we use our branch name. So in this case, it's methyl, but there's three of them, so it would be trimethyl. Prefixes of the parent come next. Imagine this is just right here. Prefix of the parent chain, dash, location of the multiple bond, if it is there. And then of course, dash, the suffix of the parent chain. So let's do this in color coordination. We have to first do the locations of all the branches. I have two methyls on branch or on carbon two. So we would write two, two, and then four for the last methyl. We would name the branch name, which is trimethyl, because there's three of them. Now we go into the red. What is the name of this chain again? Pent. So we put pent there. Is there a multiple bond? In this example, no. So we wouldn't need to dash anything. But all we need to do is let the reader know that we have full of single bonds, so we'd use the last, the, 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 the suffix ain. So that's two, two, four, tri, methyl, pent, ain. There we have it. Now, I'm gonna go over four examples really quick. Now would be the time to pause and go back and go through this again if you need to, right? But this is gonna get crazy. So let's rock and roll, shall we? Um, so the first thing we need to do is take a look at this one. I've gone ahead and I've already labeled it. You know, the first, the first step was what's the parent chain, right? So I have put there. Now let's, how many carbons is that? I've counted one, two, three, four, and five carbons. So this is a five carbon chain. What does five carbon chain mean? Pent, yet again. Next step. As we've labeled this, I've noticed something strange here. Do you notice it? Here is an ein, right? Here is a triple bond, which is ein. So our ending is going to be indi indicative of a triple bond. Let's look and find the branches. Here's a branch. There's a branch. What are they? Well, it's a one carbon. See, there's a one carbon at the end. That would be a methyl group, another methyl. So there's two methyls on carbon three. So let's put it all together. Three, three, right, uh, is, is the deal there, right? We got methyl and methyl. Oh, that's right. What's the prefix for two? Di. So we have three, three, dimethyl, three, three, dimethyl. That means there's a methyl and a methyl, both on three. Pent is my parent prefix. That means five carbons. Dash, one. We always put the location of the multiple bond where it starts. So one, ein. The name of this compound is 3,3-dimethylpent-1-ein. 
It's a mouthful. We can do it again. Parent chain. Here it is. Right? Oh, if you're going to do it, pause it. Uh, label it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I can go other ways. I can start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter. It's going to do the same thing. Six is hex. Notice how that we have a double bond, which means it's going to end in E and E. It's an ene. It's an alkene. We have a, a uh, not a substrate. We have a um, branch here and a branch there. Looks like there's one carbon. It looks like there's two carbons on this one. So that's going to be a different branch. Uh, we have a methyl over here and a two carbon branch would be an ethyl. So that is, uh, we would write this first in our name because alphabetically E comes before M. So what do we have? Three ethyl, four methyl, and hex is our parent uh, prefix, and we have to put the uh, ene is going from three to four, so it's dash three ene. The name of this compound, three ethyl four methyl hex three ene. Ugh, this is crazy. This is a long video, isn't it? But it's okay. It's worth it. And maybe you want to try these on your own. I don't know. Drawing it is very similar, but you just have to go from right to left. I can see a triple bond on the second carbon. I can see a hex. That means six carbon chain. There is two methanes, right, or methyls that are attached to the four and five carbon. And there is an ethyl that's attached to the four. And so we would draw that out. Here are six carbons. We're going to start with the six, put my triple bond on the second one, and there is a methyl group on the four, there's a methyl group on the five, and there's an ethyl group on the four, and then we're just going to label up all of these hydrogens, making sure that each and every carbon has exactly and only four complete bonds. Could you do this next one? Pause it, try it. Going from right to left, there is a double bond. It's on the fifth carbon. There are 10 carbons. There is a propyl. That's a three carbon chain on number three carbon. There's a methyl on four. There is, uh, there's my, there's my uh, formulas. But maybe, you know what? Let's try and do one of those squiggly line ones, right? Here's my 10. Here's my double bond. Here's a, uh, a propyl on number three. And there is a methyl on number four. This is amazing. This takes a lot of practice, okay? So practice it. Try to take the structure to the name. Try to take the name to the structure. I wish you all the luck in the world. Slow this down. And this is just basics. Um, I'm going to eat the rest of that cake. Adieu.